Hey guys, happy Monday, cheers to you. <laughs> this is my third take on this video because I, the first one I screwed up and I spilled water on myself. The second one, the FedEx guy came in the middle of, um, in the middle of it and I had to sign, so. Let me just tell you something. It is, well, I wish it was a little earlier. I let myself sleep in because of the intensity of the weekend and lack of sleep. But I've already downed 33.8 ounces of water um, just from before my workout, during my workout, and right now. So, I don't know about you guys, but the easiest way for me to down the water, I see the sweat dripping down. Uh, what are we at? We're at 5.51 and I'm still going back for more. Um, for me, the easiest way to down water is at room temperature. Um, for me, I have never liked to drink. And you gotta find what's right for you, remember? We're finding what's right for us. Some people like ice water, some people like it with lemon. I am gonna be doing a lot more lemon in my water. Some hot, I do enjoy hot water with lemon, isn't that weird? Like, it's hard for me to drink tea. I don't find as much joy in tea, except for the tea that is made up in Seattle. Actually, I believe it's made in Japan, but then it's the company is based in Seattle. Sugimoto, um, Japanese, I think it's called, the name of the tea is just Sa or Ja or something, J-A or S-A or something. Um, I need to call them again, actually. That's my favorite tea. I had it with um, my uh, man friend, Chris, up at, uh, he works at Microsoft, and we went for sushi, and we had the best. He was kind of like, can we go now? And I'm like, I need some of this tea, and I need to find out what this tea is, and I need to buy a lot of it. Anyway, that said, the easiest way for me to chug water is to keep this with me at all times, and then usually, here's an idea, me and my friend Sherry just have a contest where we keep track of how much water the other person has drank, drank, drunk, drinked, whatever. I'm gonna have to look that up, what the proper etiquette, excuse me, proper English term is for that, but she'll text me and go, how much water have you down? And I'm like, one bottle, and then she'll be like, oh yeah, I'm at one and a half, and then I'm like, oh crap. So it gets to be like this fun game, but it gets you drinking your water. I've really been bad, and it became very clear to me how bad I've been on drinking my water um, the past probably a couple months, really. So it's going to be a big focus of mine. Um, and I'm going to put some other things out there after this weekend, but I'm going to try to stay on point. There's two points I want to make today, because I stopped my workout to come in here and make a point, and as I turn this music on, the music that you're hearing in the background today, is some new stuff I bought uh, from iTunes that they played this weekend. Music that I didn't have on my iTunes. But that's going to be my first point, is this thing about music, and then I'm going to get into my second point, which is focus. Um, here's the thing. I was at the Tony Robbins um, Unleash the Power Within seminar all weekend, thanks to Amy. Um, her husband couldn't go at the last minute, so she asked me, and I remember she, when she asked me, she said, are you ready for me to change your life? And I'm like, oh, are you going to get me a naughty, a naughty present? That's an inside joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, so um, I was like, yeah, and then she told me about it. And I said, you know what, Amy, if you would have asked me to attend something like this two and a half years ago, I would have been like, oh, are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to walk on fire and do all this. And um, whatever. I would have been like most people who are skeptical of things they don't know and don't understand and are scared to um, participate in. And yet I knew that it was the right time. It was the right time for me personally, professionally, spiritually, financially, in my business, everything. Um, and that's really what these immersion experiences are all about. It's, it's about, you know, digging deep and, and finding out, you know, fully defining your vision and your focus and kind of, you know, shedding all of the excuses and really figuring yourself out. It's just, I can't, ex I can't even explain or describe how much I learned and if you guys thought that I was amped before, that's nothing compared to what this weekend did for me. But I'm trying to stay focused. I'm four minutes in. I don't think my vlogs are going to change that much as far as focus. Music. They, I don't think they played this song. I just happened to be downloading a bunch of songs and, and, and I was like, oh, I still don't have this on my iPod. Because remember when iTunes and iPod like erased 6,000 songs at least? Maybe 2,000. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating. Anyway, um, I had to down, I'm, I'm in the process of like over the next several months, kind of going back, figuring out, oh, that's another song they wiped out. I have to go, you know, buy again or figure out another way. Um, so 
all this music was playing, one of the things that they did, when you go to these Tony Robbins seminars, they are, I mean, I've never done anything like it. And in the beginning, I was kind of going into it going, what is up with no breaks, Amy? You go from like eight in the morning until midnight, sometimes one o'clock. Now I will give you this. We never stayed until one o'clock. Usually we would leave like, you know, um, the first night I think we got home, I think we got home at one o'clock, Thursday night, Friday night we left early, Saturday we were there until 11. Sunday, uh, we stayed until about six. It went till about seven. But anyway, the one thing that they do is so they, it, it's called immersion and, and it's not called immersion, these types of seminars or experiences as a joke. It's immersion because as Amy said, you, you go into these experiences and you're literally like, you only have time to wake up, go to the seminar and then you're in it all day. They don't have breaks for lunch or snacks or coffee talk. You are in it all day in this auditorium with 5,000 people, um, you know, and you're and but in between what they'll do is they do these like dance breaks and, you know, motivation breaks or, but it's really like just kind of playing killer music and everybody high-fiving, getting just totally amped up. And let me tell you, they had the best DJ there. Every song, I was like, I want every single song that they've played, every mix that they've played, because you just got in the best mood and you got so amped. And I've always said that. You know, when I finish my workouts, if I work out at home, I'll come out here and put my music on and I don't care what it is. Okay, like whatever you like. I like everything from like Nickelback and Metallica to Lady Gaga to Guns N' Roses to, you know, I've got really cool yoga music and then I like blues and I like country. I mean, my tastes are diverse. But for usually for working on kind of getting amped up, it's usually rock or dance. Um, and yes, I even like the Spice Girls and NSYNC, so don't judge me. They had the best music, and here's the thing. I went in this morning and I was getting ready to work out, and I just put on one of the songs, and it was like a new mix of a Britney Spears song. I'm like, come on in a second. But I'm telling you guys, sometimes so many of you write to me and you're like, how do you stay in a good mood? How do you get excited about working out? Whatever. I, I mean, I almost want to say, if you find yourself some music that motivates you, and you put that on and you can't get in the mood to like move, there's something wrong with you. Like, call me crazy, but yeah, and many of you do, that's cool. Um, honest to God, like how can you not get in the mood to move? How many of you guys have said, and I know I've said it, I could be at the end of a run and some great song that just is like, ah, gets on and, and I'll either be on the treadmill and I'll go another 10 minutes when I think I've hit the end of my workout or whatever, or I'll push harder. It, it, you hear a song and you're like, screw it, you know, and uh, why not squeeze in? Why not keep moving? And get yourself some good music. And then, you know, if it gets to be the end of the day and that's when you need to do your workout and you don't feel like it, put the music on, put the music on in your car, put the music on in your office, put the music on at home. I, I guarantee you, if you just get yourself some mad tunes and say, say you think you can't work out that day, put it on in the, in the, in the kitchen like me when you're getting your breakfast ready. Before you're going, I guarantee you, you're going to do some movement and I, and I, and there's nothing, nobody can tell me you can't play certain music and not just get amped and motivated. Music can just change my mood. So, I'm at eight minutes in and I wanted to make one other point, so I'm going to be a little bit over ten minutes, but I think you're going to find it worth it. I learned so, so much from this experience, and please forgive me, because this is my third take at this vlog this morning, so I might, ha I might be repeating myself, <laughs> but um, suffice it to say that this weekend was perfect timing for me. It was extraordinary. Um, I think I said this before, but if you thought, you know, I was motivated or amped up before about life and about um, my business and about everything and, and my fitness journey and, and doing well and doing good for others in life, if you thought I was motivated before, that was like a warm up. That was like down here. You can barely see that, right? It's just starting. So, one of the things that they brought up this weekend is something, it's a concept that has been said in many different books in many different ways by many different people. And when people are in a bad place, they will usually listen to somebody who says uh, this phrase or this uh, concept and be like, okay, so have you not heard something that says, um, you know, what you, what you think about, you bring about. Or if you if you focus on the bad, if you give your energy to the bad, you know, that's, that's what will um, intensify, that's what you attract. You know, this has been said in The Secret and The Law of Attraction, by in many books, and in fact, it says it in the Bible. I don't care what you say or what you think. 
it is true. And, and it is a human tendency, okay? And, and this has come up in my Ultimate Yogi DVDs. It has come up when I train with Jay. Um, think about when you're working out, okay? And, and I'm, I'm always about the metaphor and the, the way to show you guys something or think about something so you go, oh, like I do. And then it makes sense and then you can apply it. We automatically, as human beings, tend to move away from things that are difficult, that are a challenge, and go into, some, go into you know, um, a situation, or if, say we're working out into a pose, if it's yoga, into quitting early, if it's our workouts, um, that is more comfortable. That's what your body and your mind wants to do. We're not naturally inclined to get up every day and go, you know what, I really wanna make my hamstrings stretch so that they feel like they're gonna snap out of my skin. Nobody says that. But we know tight hamstrings are not good. We know lack of flexibility is not good. But you can get into your yoga pose, and so many of these DVDs, when I do Ultimate Yogi, he said, you know, and we get into a stretch, and I'm like, oh, that hurts. Immediately, I'm like, immediately my thought is when I get into a yoga pose, and it is hurting, and there's always going to be a level of hurt when you're stretching what you haven't done before. My immediate con unconscious or conscious thought is, I bet you I'm probably pushing it too much. I should, I should back out of this because it's hurting me. And then he'll say, why is it our human tendency to automatically avoid the pain? Automatically. And, and it is, right? You know, if you burn yourself, which I'm getting to in a second, if you burn yourself, your tendency is to like, you know, get away and, and, and that makes sense when you're talking about safety, right? But here's the thing. When you, when you do that, regularly throughout your life. If you're on the treadmill and you're like, oh, you know, I'm just so tired. You know, I said I was gonna do 30 minutes, but it's 20 minutes and you know, 20 minutes is enough. I've done 20 minutes, that's fine. And then you give up. Every time you do that, you're, you're, you're missing out on your, your ability because all of us have so much more ability than we think, okay? I walked on fire this weekend. I walked on coals. Now granted, I have a little blister on my foot, which I'm gonna get to in a second because I was a dumbass, but, um, I would do it again. I would do it again if I could every freaking week, every month if they had it, you know, whatever it is. It was an amazing experience because you face what you think you cannot do. But here's the thing, your, your body and your mind is automatically gonna tell you to take the easy way out. When I would train with Jay and, and I would be, you know, doing these reps and I'm like, I can't, I can't, I can't. He's like, you can, you can, that's it. And he would, he would push me in his own way to make sure that I did it. And a good trainer will always do that for you. Um, they're gonna push you because your body wants to wimp out. Your body wants to quit the treadmill before, because you're like, well, no one's looking. I can just, you know, that's fine. I'm sure 27 minutes is just as good as 30. No, it's not. 27 minutes is not 30. And I bet you if you did 30, you'd feel so damn proud of yourself because your mind wanted to stop at 27 and you went to 30 that you're gonna go to 35, okay? I'm, God, I'm gonna try to keep this under 15 minutes. So here's the deal. And I know I'll speak more about this because I'm so, you know, once you get something and you realize you have this, this moment of awakening, it can change everything in your life. Not just your fitness, but everything. Think about your tendency to automatically take the easy way out. Think about your tendency in whatever it is, if it's your work, oh, I'm not gonna ask for a raise because, you know, oh, I'm sure I'm, he's gonna say no, I've gone to him five times before and I've asked, blah, blah, blah. That's you being a wuss and you're just scared to ask. Go and ask. Stop trying to figure out why you're basically making it easy for yourself to not ask for the raise and then bitch and moan about your job. If you have a problem with your spouse and you wanna go to your spouse and say, you know, oh, you know, we've talked about this forever, nothing's ever gonna work. Go talk and go do the work. At least you can, you know, it's not a guarantee that things are gonna um, work out the way you want them to. Just like if you ask for a raise, you might get turned down. But then you're taking action. You know, I founded this company because I got to the end of uh, 2010 and I realized that I was turning into that person that was bitching and moaning about my job all the time. And I'm like, if I don't take action, I'm turning into my own worst nightmare. That person that's like, ugh, hate my job. So here's the thing. I walked on fire Thursday night, <laughs> and my over-analytical mind, I knew I was gonna walk on there, but when you get up to the, the coals, it's dark out. This was like at 11 o'clock at night. And there's, there were three people up there, and I started to do that thing where I wanted to like ask all the questions and, and think about it. And the thing about walking on fire, you just go and you walk. So when I put my foot down on the, on the fire, there was this one moment walking across it that I felt a coal, a hot coal. Um, on my left foot and there was just a moment that I knew I was pausing and I was like and then that moment because I remember everything 
but I paused, I felt it on the bottom of my heel, my, it's actually in my arch, and I'm like, I'm not gonna lie, I was like, oh shit, I am pausing, and then I kept going. So, I have a blister on the, um, it's just a blister, um, on the bottom of my uh, arch, and like an idiot, because I always like to peel skin, I've told you guys about this, um, I, I popped it, which you're supposed to do. If you have a blister, you're supposed to pop it with a pin and let the, the liquid peel, uh, heal, uh, come out. But I peel the skin too early. So underneath the, the flesh, is uh, it's sensitive, right? I got up this morning and my first thought was, as I was walking around, I'm like, oh, this is, you know, this is uncomfortable. I'm, I'm probably not gonna be able to do my turbo fire because I'm not gonna be able to put a sock on it. I'm not gonna be able to do this. Ugh. You guys, this is gonna be a long video, I'm sorry. Um, and I was already this morning, as much as I was annoyed, I was annoyed, I haven't been able to work out in four days, we had no time. I, I was annoyed at not doing my workouts and I so wanted to do my workouts, but I was already wussing out. I was already going, focusing on the one thing in my whole body that's bad, which is this little sore on the bottom of my foot. There are people that do triathlons and they have blisters and they're bleeding and they're like, it's all over and they keep going. And here's me in my house, fishing to myself and trying to find a wuss way out because I have a blister on my foot. So you know what I did? At first I thought, well, I know I can do that one uh, ballet body workout because I don't have to put shoes on. For, for some reason I thought I couldn't put shoes on. Guess what I have on my feet right now? I don't even know if I can. Shoes! I have shoes on my feet. I have shoes on both of my feet. So I put my, I put the special kind of Band-Aid, it's from Band-Aid that has a, um, it's got like a gel on it that heals blisters fast. Put that on, put my sock on, put the shoes on, and guess what? I was able to walk around, and guess what? I did my turbo fire, and guess what? I'm gonna go back and finish with ballet body. So, of course, I've rambled on here and burned another 50 calories, but I'll probably be at seven, maybe 750, 800 calories by the end of this. And I've started off my day, and guess what, people? I'm doing this video for you. I haven't had a cup of coffee. I haven't had nothing, just water. And you think that this kind of energy is fake? It's not fake, this is, this is just me. I got it for you. So don't, don't, every time you find yourself automatically focusing on the easy way out or why you can't do something, step back and go, what am I doing? And if you think you can't do something, and I'm not talking about something crazy like flying off a building or something stupid, um, but I didn't think I could work out today. And you know why? Because it's being a wuss, it's being easy on myself. There's something about being, yes, you need to be smart. If you broke your leg, okay, don't go and do something stupid and say, oh yeah, I can still work out and do yoga with a broken leg. Um, do, do what's smart, but don't wuss out. Amy was asking me, and I, I'm gonna stop as soon as possible. I realized what it was I was being um, with Amy. Amy and I are talking about doing the, she wants to do the Vegas rock and run, right? And I was like, she wanted me to do it. And I thought, before I saw her this weekend, I'm like, I'm gonna tell her that I don't do it because that's just not what I do. I like to run on my own. I'm not a marathon person. And so we were talking this weekend and she goes, we should do it. And I immediately, what do you think the first thing is I said to her? I'm like, do you really think that I'm gonna have time to train for that? Because I don't really, you know, and she's like, you have plenty of time. And I, as I thought about it this morning, I'm like, that's me automatically trying to figure out a reason for why I can't do it. And you know why? Because deep down inside, I don't think I can do it. I don't think that I can run for two and a half hours straight um, because I tend to like to run 30 minutes. And you guys know that I've told you I get that stomach ache at mile and a half. So I'm automatically going, oh, I'm gonna get the stomach ache. There's no way I'm gonna be able to run. Guess what? I am running and I'm gonna do it because every time I find myself looking for the easy way out, up. Oh, Hell no, I'm not gonna take the easy way out. Are you kidding? I just worked out with a damn blister on my foot that I thought I couldn't even walk on, and I just owned it this morning. So, that's all I have to say about you. Put your music on, get yourself some music, stop making excuses, stop looking for the easy way out. That's all I have to say about that, and I'm sorry for the 19 minute video.